welcome back to ipcot tv now the topic is multiple atrial septal defects introduction to atrial septal defects atrial septal defect is one of the most commonly recognized congenital anomalies presenting in adulthood asd is characterized by a defect in the intraatrial septum allowing pulmonary venous return from left atrium to pass directly to the right atrium depending on the size of the defect size of the shunt and associated anomalies this can result in a spectrum of disease from no cardiac cicular to right sided volume overload pulmonary artery hypertension and atrial arrhythmias the type of atrial septal defects there are four type of defects number 1 Ostium secundum ASD is an incomplete addition between the flap valve associated with the foramen oval and the septum secundum after birth. It's accounting for 70% of all ASD cases. Number 2. Ostium primum ASD. This defect is caused by incomplete fusion of septum primum with the endocardial fusion. This accounts for 15 to 20% of all ASD defects. Number 3 sinus venous ASD is a abnormal fusion between the embryologic sinus venous and the atrium in most cases the defect lies superior in the atrial septum near the entry of superior vena cava this often associated anomalous drainage of the right pulmonary vein this accounts accounting 5 to 10% number 4 coronary venous coronary sinus ASD defect unroofed coronary sinus and the present left superior vena cava the that drains into the left atrium this accounts less than 2% defect the mechanism of abnormal physiology and complications in atrial septal defects as it can go unrecognized for decades due to septal physical examination findings and a lack of symptoms even large size isolated defect may not cause symptoms in childhood the first change in the atrial septal defect is the decrease in left compliance that augments left to right shunt second changes atrial arrhythmias especially atrial fibrillation atrial flutter or paroxysmal atrial tachycardia increase in frequency after the fourth decade and can precipitate right heart failure third change adult become symptomatic after fourth decade and will have mild to moderate pulmonary hypertension in the presence of large left to right shunt most common symptoms dyspnea easy fatigability palpitations syncope stroke and heart failure this is an ideal example of one of my patient her age is 75 years old when she comes to me for the evaluation of serious heart failure become more symptomatic for last 5 years and had frequent ic visit for her complaints of shortness of breath cough giddiness and cyanotic pills and diagnosed as a multiple atrial septal defect her ecg shows atrial fibrillation with heart rate 130 per minute her echocardiogram showed asd secundum asd primum with the right to left shunt severe tricuspid regurgitation and severe pulmonary artery hypertension her saturation oxygen saturation was 80% at room air her chest x-ray showed bilateral pleural effusion her biochemistry saw normal except to slightly elevated troponin and pro brain natriuretic peptide this is a four chamber echocardiogram of the patient here you can see the primum defect is a very large defect as well as the secondary defect this is a color flow of atrial septal defect here the flow comes directly from tricuspid valve to left atrium as well as secondum defect from right atrium to left atrium is a very large and complicated atrial septal defect and it is not noticed 
diagnosed and treated in early stage. And this is a parasternal long axis view. Here you can see the left atrium and they are directly connected to right atrium. There is no other structure between left atrium to right atrium. Uh, here you can see the mitral valve and tricuspid valve, aortic valve. These three valves are completely separated from each other. This is a short axis view, parasternal. You can see large right ventricle uh, due to volume overload and a severe pulmonary artery hypertension. And here you can see the paradoxical septal motion of left ventricle. How we have managed this patient? We have given diuretics for her congestive symptoms, particularly loop diuretics, torsimide or furosemide. To control her rate and rhythm, for, for rate modulation, we have prescribed digoxin and for rhythm modulation, amiodarone. Both the drugs will work very well in atrial fibrillation with congestive heart failure. And we have prescribed anticoagulation and antiplatelets for to prevent thrombosis and stroke in future. And other treatments includes electrolytes and calcium magnesium management. Atrial septal defect in this case particularly, the patient is not fit for septal closure because the defect is very complicated and prime, particularly right to left shunt and severe cyanosis is the main reason for not fit for device closure. And in surgical closure also not possible in this case because pulmonary and systemic circulation ratio is less than 7 is contrary indication for surgical closure. In case of pulmonary and system blood flow, the ratio is more than 1.5 without symptoms, we can treat this case by surgery or device closure. In this patient, her pulmonary and systemic saturation ratio is 0.4. So, it is a clear cut indication, absolute indication, contraindication for surgery as well as device closure. Early detection and management is a crucial and important key point in management of atrial septal defect. In case of severe pulmonary hypertension and right to left shunt, definitely the patient life is going to be compromised and the quality of life also definitely will have complications. So treating and early diagnosis of ASD is a very important. Thank you very much for watching Ipcot TV. Subscribe Ipcot TV and share this video. Thank you.